a while back, I was inspired by this RC test flight series on making an autonomous solar rover. So I decided to build a better, more functional version that can actually crawl and scale rough terrain. So here we are. Welcome back to my solar rover build part 2. Before I show you part 2, let me rewind and do a quick recap of part 1. So a few months ago, I built this rover on a custom crawler frame and then assembled the electronics. The idea is to keep everything modular so I could easily swap out broken parts or upgrade anything. Keep this in mind because it will come in very handy later in the video. With the frame finished, I put it out on the test field and did some control tests with the RC crawler without any solar modules and found out it ran for 7 laps. Then I tested the efficiency of the MPVT solar charge controller by hooking it up with the onboard electronics. With the added weight and the power going through the MPVT circuit, the rover went 6.5 laps. So not bad for a $25 MPVT controller. With the crawler system all done, it's time to add the solar modules. For the solar panel, I bought 6 of these flexible PV cells and then I wired 2 panels in parallel and then connected 3 sets of these in series. Then I attached the whole setup under some coated plywood. To mount the solar panel to the rover, I catted some parts to make the linkage system. For the front, I took away the old adapters and then I printed another one and this is gonna be the front mount for the solar panel. So then these things will go on to the mount that I made on the solar panels. The original plan was to put screws through the two slits on those parts to secure the panel to the rover. But I decided against it and created another clip system that is easier to take on and off. And then they would just slide on like that, secured by these pegs. The way that these pegs are held is completely by friction, so I don't know if the, they will fall out when, when it's bouncing, but we'll see. After I added the solar panels, the weight of the plywood was so heavy that it flattened out the back shocks. So I adjusted the strength of the springs. But still, this means I definitely need to redesign and lighten the load in the future. With the solar panels on, the car became really wobbly and unstable, which I kinda expected. So I did an angle test to see how much the center of gravity has shifted upwards. As you can see, the max angle with the panel on is about 40 degrees before it tips over. Without the panel, it's about twice as much. Alright, so this is test number 3. We're gonna test the car's range with the solar panel on, but not with it plugged in. So, I'll just have that just dangling like that for now. And then connect the battery through the MPVT and then out to the ESC. We're gonna see how much shorter the car drives with the additional weight because this is just as heavy as everything else. All right. Just like all the tests before and after this, I will be setting the car at a constant 50% throttle and driving as straight as possible in a rectangular shape around the field. For every test, I will be driving the rover until the LiPo battery reached 11.4 volts, which is about 40% of the battery's maximum capacity. So this is the third time that it stopped. I'm gonna check the solar charge controller to see if it hit around point. As it turns out, the rover was stopping because of the motor overheating and not because of the automatic low voltage cutoff from the MPVT controller. I think it was just a problem of the weather being extremely hot that day because I did not experience this problem in any other tests. By the way, if you like this video so far, please hit the subscribe and like buttons so YouTube knows to share it with more people. But if you want to go the extra mile in supporting this channel, then I've set up a Patreon page so you can be part of the community. With just $2 per month, you can help me fund projects faster, build bigger stuff, and post more awesome videos. 
just go to patreon.com slash triple a studios or click on the link in the description back to the video all right so it's finally stopped because the entire esc just shut down so that means that the mtt cut it off and not because of the motor overheat so traveled five laps and a half in total which is a pretty significant decrease from the seven six and a half laps somehow the solar panels have to provide enough amps to make up for that one lap that is lost from the weight of this and then even more to make it run for a longer amount of time uh oh this rear part just snapped Bruh. along with the pegs when i took it off there's only three pegs which, what and the one of the front ones lost one Bruh. and i don't know where it is and also this thing cracked right here so with almost every 3d printed part broken on this car i went home and redesigned some parts then i came out the next day for the final this test. is the complete setup so this time everything is set up uh including the uh, mpvt controller i printed these with 80 percent info so it should be way stronger now so right now it's 12.6 volts which means that it is 100 percent capacity i'm gonna bring it out in the sun and there it is it's charging on so we'll see how many laps it goes there we go so this is lap one Looks like that it finally stopped. I don't even know how many laps it went. It went a lot. So with the solar panel connected to the rover, it drove for nine laps. This means that there is almost a 100% increase in the distance compared to the previous test. And compared with the stock setup, which drove for seven laps, the solar powered version saw a 30% increase which is really impressive because these flexible solar cells are not known to be very efficient. In fact, if we look at the output current of these cells on the MPVT, it literally says 0 amps because the current is so small that it's in the 100th place and not being displayed. When this car is running, the setup draws in about 2.5 amps, so theoretically, if I could somehow find a solar configuration that could output the same or more current, then this rover would achieve self-sustainability. While I originally chose these cells for their durability, I plan to change them to the conventional monocrystalline cells for maximum efficiency. I think there is something very promising in this rover, and my plan is to make it run forever so it can do autonomous missions someday. So if you want to see version 2 of this rover with an upgraded solar charging system and a new FPV system, then please subscribe to keep posting. And as always, thank you for watching.